So I wanted to cover my editing workflow and how I get all my videos produced on uh, Linux and still using Caden Live for my editing. I've been using it for a while. Um, I want to do some more tutorials on it. But the problem is I don't do a lot of complicated things with Caden Live. Uh, so I've been a little bit slow to get more tutorials out there. It's a wonderful video editor. It's really easy to use. It's very, very powerful. And I'm going to show you a little bit of like my editing setup and how I do things. Now I'm actually using uh, right now OBS to record. So OBS is part of my workflow. I'm gonna drag it in here so you can kind of see it. If you're not familiar with OBS, it's a pretty amazing program. It's free, it's cross-platform. So if you're a Windows user watching my videos, you go, how do you do your screencast and recording? OBS, you can use it in uh, different platforms. Now I have it set up with different views like uh, middle screen, left screen, uh, right screen. And then I have, uh, three screens without me in it and three screens with me in it with the webcam here. So I got the webcam at the bottom and because you're seeing OBS, it's not behind something, you're seeing some recursion of, uh, you know, infinitely looking down into it. Um, I record all my OBS streams in the uh, Yeti microphone that I have up here. Been using it for a while. You can pick up a Yeti for pretty reasonably priced. This is the uh, THX model. I think you can find these under $100 on eBay. I bought this one slightly used it still came in a box it said refurbished never had a problem with it and i got it uh, i won the bid really cheap on ebay for them so they're a really high quality camera great for doing these voice recordings and you know if you want to do youtube videos having good camera or having a good microphone really important uh the camera is just a standard logitech i can't remember the name of it C720, I think you can, they're, they're not expensive, nothing real special about it and some lighting setup. So back to the actually editing and workflow. So right now this is being recorded with uh, OBS, but we're first gonna start with a project that wasn't recorded. And it's one that was done with uh, a series of videos that I took at a Chamber of Commerce event. So I'm gonna leave it with all three screens pulled up. Now, something kind of strange about Caden Live, when you are out of focus on it, and versus when it's in focus, it has the third window over here. So I'll play the little thing that I did here, and I'll show you what I did to create this. So in my preview clips are still here in the middle, but I drag it so I have a big high-res screen over there to view the um, the output. So I want to be able to look at it in high res so I can kind of understand what it's doing. So, you know, I uh, this was a little car bash event they did. So then we got Marvin there. I threw the little title at the bottom. And then I cut while he's talking. So you have the narration here and all these other clips are muted. So we create the whole effect. And what uh, what it's doing here is all the clips are named right in here. So I'll zoom into the middle screen now. And the way they had, the way they got all these names was, and I just dragged them and dropped them in. I download all the clips right out of my camera. I play each clip and figure out which one's which, you know, which one that shit. So I had one that's uh, called Bacon Beer, Beer 2s. So I took pictures of beer cans. The DJI ones, I don't need to name. I know DJI is my drone video. Uh, so I had two different drone shots that I included in this. And then I have uh, I one I labeled narration. And these two, they were kind of useless, so they didn't even get named. They didn't even get dragged into the project. And then all you have to do from there, drag over the files, let them go on top of there, and then they're here. And then you can preview them and figure out, okay, where do I want to start? So I'm gonna drag one way over here. And I just drag them in and I'm gonna go back to the three screen mode so you can see. And I drag and figure out, okay, where's it gonna start? And then I put that at the bottom track, so that's for, gonna be for the narration part. So that's this bottom track that you see here. And with the bottom track, that's the whole narration. Then each one of these, I drag the mute over to. So like I have have this one, the effect is mute. And the way you drag effects on there is really easy. You just go over here, mute, and it'll double up a, a effect if you want to apply effect twice because at two different ratios or anything like that. Uh, that's easily support in Caden Live. So I mute all these other top ones across here. This is the title clip. And then the title clip is just their logo for the uh, Chamber of Commerce that we put on top. Now this is where when you're doing the uh, interaction to make sure it kind of, let me put it to three screens so you can see the preview, or I'll just put it, uh, there we go. So I wanted the, it to fade over here so it kind of fades in and out. 
and then fades away. Now there's a little trick to doing that when you're setting up the fades when you want some of the things to come over the top on there. And the way you're I'm doing that is the uh, dissolve is what I'm doing. So I did a dissolve, but you have to choose what it interacts with. So it's interacting with video two because video two is over the top of the narration video, but on the last part, I have it interacting with video one because I want it to dissolve into that video because they're at different layers on there. So you gotta make sure that, so this one dissolves there, this one dissolves there, pretty easy to do. And then with the title clips, they are, and I didn't name this one because there's only one, but there's multiple title clips where I wanna put and overlay things on there. You just take and drag a PNG in here. Uh, I'm sorry, not drag it because it doesn't support drag and drop, but you add image, find the PNG, which I, threw in there, their logo is actually a PNG on their website, just downloaded it and throw it in there. But you can use any other tools to create and manipulate the photos, drag the, put the PNG in there, and then to give it some contrast, I just drew a rectangle with the rectangle tool up here, so you could just add a rectangle, and then you can set the color of the rectangle and the alpha blend on it. So I didn't want a solid rectangle, I wanted a semi-transparent, and then I wanted it underneath, so you can go up here to the top where it says Z index, and hit down, and it puts it at the very bottom. So I'm gonna cancel, so I don't really wanna make that change to this. So it's pretty straightforward, and then you just drag a few fades in here. So I fade between all the different cuts as it goes through. And Marvin you know, uh, is doing the narration at the bottom. And when he mentions something, so I listen to the narration and where he mentions things, I add at that point a shot of it. So he talks about the beer available at this event. So we cut to the beer scene. You know, uh, Other time it's when he's not saying anything that's visually relevant because he's talking with his hands a little bit, then I'll reference back to the drone shot. And that's what these are here. So I can reference the shots I got there. He mentions the word bacon. So I reference to the bacon shot here. So it's pretty straightforward when I'm doing the editing and you know it's not not real complicated. So I haven't done a lot of tutorials. It looks a little bit complicated, but all you do is drag it across timelines and doing there. I don't really do much more than some dissolve fades and things like that. It's just to get the point across. Uh, Cause you know, there's plenty of people who are really good at editing and really talented um, and they do some amazing stuff. I just really haven't taken the time to do that. Cause as long as I get my YouTube videos done, I've kind of stopped and okay, that's good enough for now. Maybe I'll learn some advanced stuff later. Now. I'll show you a little bit of how we do the OBS ones. So when we do the OBS ones and say, nope, we're not gonna see any changes on here. You'll notice that the video is split. And the reason why, and if you can see this, it says offset five. There is a five frame delay to get the audio synced up with this. And the way you do that, it's actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna start a new project and show you what this, and the five frame delay is because I run at 30 frames a second. And when I record with OBS, it seems to, cut the audio. I've played with the delay settings inside of OBS, uh, didn't work. <laughs> it's not, it, it, uh, it's easier to split it, uh, split the audio. So when I first get something done in OBS, I have my OBS folder here where it records things. We'll drag, see which video is this one. Yeah, that's the one I did. So I drag it here and then you right click on the video and you're gonna say split audio. And then it's quicker if I just I use the mouse and control to zoom in all the way, however you wanna zoom in, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to ungroup the clips so they're now two separate entities. And then I count frames, five frames over, just drag this, and I know it's a five frame offset. Now that, that's just gonna vary based on your system, your setup, your computer, but this is how you split the audio out if you need to for OBS, because it's annoying if the voice isn't synced up with what I'm doing. That's a, that's a weird thing, like watching someone talk, but the audio's off. It's, it is really annoying. I've accidentally done it a couple times when I publish videos, so I try to be very conscious and do this. So once I have this, and then you, select the clips again, hold the control key to select both clips, and then I go ahead and group the clip back together. Now the reason you group it is because I'm gonna start slicing and dicing in here. So I go to the cut tool and I'm gonna slice out the beginning because I'm gonna say nothing. I just usually let it, you know, uh, start to roll in, get myself composed and uh, start playing the video. But other times, or maybe another clip, you go, ah, I don't want this in here. So you take that out. If I didn't have it grouped, I would be having to line up and drag this, especially if I did something like this and put another video in between or anything like that. You wanna make sure that this stays aligned. That's why I did the grouping of the clips. So it's really straightforward for editing like that. And most of the time when I'm doing these tutorial videos, you know, on, on firewalls or anything like that where I'm using OBS as a screen capture, I just go in here and clip out things that are irrelevant. I watch the peaks and say, okay, can I cut this out? Uh, if I really paused or ummed, 
it's one of those things like, okay, I just got to take this part out. Now, another thing I do, maybe you notice, maybe you don't, uh, I leave long pauses when I screw up and then I cut it out and try to remember where I left off. And I think I get it pretty accurate, but I part of the quality testing I'm doing is going through here and making sure that, okay, is that good or not? Like, okay, I screw that up, I said this wrong, so I'll leave a long pause so I don't have to start the video over, and that's how I know that's the edit point. Uh, the other option is going through and writing down the minutes and seconds of when I did something. The hardest part about that is when you start clipping things out of the beginning, you've now offset the minutes at the end. So kind of my recording tip, I do screw up. I don't just rip these, well, sometimes I do, <laughs> if I get lucky, rip them in one set without any pauses, without any stopping, without any breaks, but a lot of times, uh, there, there's pauses, there's breaks, there's me pausing to make sure I pull up a screen um, off to the other side and look at the specs. I sometimes put a couple notes if I have to read uh, detailed specs or like a CV vulnerability or some some really uh, specific detail that I want to make sure I'm accurate on. I'll actually pause and I got my phone in front of me and I'll look at the phone, read the number again, and I just leave a pause in there. And that way I know I cut out the pause, cut out me looking at the phone and keep the video going. Also, if you sneeze or something like that, this is helpful. Just leave a long pause, makes it easy to find in a video. And I know there's at least one long pause towards the end here, I think in this one, eh, maybe not. But uh, I just look for those. That way you can just quickly find the spot that you paused and cut it out for editing without having to start the whole project over. So that's kind of the basics for how I get the video done, how to make the video recording, nothing real complicated there. The next thing we do is I'm gonna grab a screenshot of things to build my thumbnails. Because in YouTube, it's important to build good thumbnails because you want them to be contextually important, not just randomly generated, because YouTube will pick a frame and you know, and then let you choose, but that's not the best way to do it. And I used Photoshop for the longest time, because I'm still not a big fan of GIMP, but I got good enough at GIMP in order to make this happen. So I bust up my trusty screenshot tool. Let me pull it up, put it over to the right window here. And I grab a screenshot of whatever we're doing. So I'll pull one of these up. So this is just a screen grab from it. So when I'm editing, and let me put it back in three screen for you real quick. So to, I say, okay, maybe I want that screen. You'll see it over here on the right. And then I just use the uh, screenshot tool and I have it set on a timer on purpose, and I'll show you why. And now that has grabbed a screenshot of that. And then I can quickly uh, edit the screenshot if I need to do something in here, like you know, put an arrow or something, things like that. This is now the first piece of it, so I grab a screenshot. Now the other time the screenshot tool is really handy, and, and the reason it's not a countdown is if I have to show you a menu for something. So if, if I wanted to show you the uh, control menu here, we are gonna go ahead and grab a screenshot and I wanna grab it of this, enter, and a delay reaction of the reason I have it set to a two second timer is so then I can grab a screen grab of something like a menu or a context menu. This helps on websites where I wanna show something in motion, so to speak, and you hold it open uh, to give you the idea of that it's there. So that's kind of the reason for the delay. Other, other things is so the mouse over, when you do drag it over, doesn't get kicked off. And that can be a pain in a butt too, like a mouse over on a YouTube video where you get the tile. I only want a screenshot of the YouTube video in, instead of uh, the little the play button and things like that. So by doing it and letting it fade for two seconds, it'll fade out the uh, tools on there. Now, the other way I do this is, and I'll grab a window and drag it over here, is, you know, needing logos for things and stuff like that. So uh, Google logo. And we just do a quick image here. So if I'm talking about a company, I can just grab their logo uh, from them this one's animated, I don't want an animated one. And I can either use a screen grab or we're gonna show you how I do this in GIMP. So let's open up GIMP real quick. So I pretty much don't use GIMP for anything but this. <laughs> so here's the uh, clip I made for that uh, Citron Research video. And everything's just a series of layers. So I don't touch these top layers that I have in here. Uh, they're Make sure the webcam's out of the way. These top layers up here, I don't really mess with. So we're gonna go ahead, well this one I see it says uh, Citron Exposes, that's the text layer. 
This is my logo. Uh, this is a bottom template, and then here's the clipboard one, clipboard two. So we're gonna purge that clipboard, purge that clipboard. And if we wanna edit the text, I just go down here. My video editing workflow. We'll actually do this video, why not? Well, I can't really do the screen grab for it. Well, I could do some things. I'll do a couple things here to give you an idea. So I'm uh, using Linux and Caden Live. Uh, I gotta spell things right. See Linux, uh, we need some commas in here. Linux and comma Caden Live, comma GIMP, comma, uh, what's the screen tool? <laughs> uh, Shutter. So we'll, I'll finish this, uh, but I'm just gonna make sure you guys have an idea. Now, along the way, in case it crashes, it seems to be pretty stable, but it doesn't crash often, so I save that. Now, occasionally I wanna put more things in here, so we're actually gonna downsize the text a little a bit like this, and put the word using here. Then I'll go down to the bottom, using Git, and Shutter. I pretty much, the tools I use for uh, almost all of my videos, and oh, we gotta add OBS in here. OBS, put a comma, all right. Now, eventually, now I gotta go pull the logos for those things, I kinda, like I said, I like having the logos on there. And this is where it gets pretty easy for doing this in GIMP. And normally I do this on my split screen, I'll just keep it all on one screen for you, but let's say we want the Caden Live logo. Caden Live. View image. And it's a PNG file you can see here. So we're just gonna go copy image, go over here to GIMP, edit, paste as, new layer. Simple, really easy to do. Now this is where it gets a little confusing. Normally I'm used to Photoshop where I can just grab bars around it and resize it. You have to use the scaling tool in GIMP. And then by default, the scaling tool isn't synced. So I want it synced so if I do scale it, it, I don't want to screw up the logo like that. So I'm gonna do this, we'll do this, and then I can adjust and scale it so it doesn't skew the logo into some unusual sides, and I click scale, and away we go. Then I gotta go back over to the, this tool, then I can manipulate it, move it around wherever I want. So, I'm, you know, I'm just pasting each one as a new layer. So I don't have to download it off the internet or anything like that, which is actually pretty handy. So I can just go here, now we're gonna grab the uh, OBS logo. Like this one, it says open broadcast software, copy image, edit, paste as new layer. Oh, if someone knows a shortcut key to paste as new layer, let me know, because um, I see how it there. Control shift V, paste it, but it doesn't do it as a new layer. It doesn't do what I want it to do. Uh, so yeah, that, <laughs> so one of those little details. Uh, if you know some shortcuts, if I'm doing something and you know, hey, Tom, there's a better way. Like I said, I'm still learning GIMP and still getting better at it. I wanna keep everything in Linux as much as I can, because Photoshop, really easy to do this, and I would probably, I could do things so much faster in Photoshop, and I'm putting some effort in here to learn GIMP. So then we get the OBS logo, uh, shutter logo. But you get the idea that I, you go through here and then that's how I create the thumbnails. Now, the other step that's going in there, paste this new layer, move this down here. The other step is exporting it. Now, it saves it in a uh, format that's a GIMP format, so you're not able to do that. And I don't save my thumbnails, like you see, if you see the name at the top here, it's YouTube 2017 template GIMP.XCF. That's the GIMP format file for that. It's uh, 1280 by 720, which was the recommended, as I understand, for 2017 uh, size for a thumbnail for YouTube. And so when I'm done, I export it, and I title it Workflow for editing in Linux. And I just drop that to my data drive. Uh, I have a bunch of different folders and things like that, but I drop it right to the data drive and hit export. Yep, and standard PNG format when it's done. And then when I do my YouTube upload, I go through and you know render the video, export the video to the video folder, and then this. I don't really keep a lot of my, uh, I don't keep any of the templates. Like um, once I edit this and I edit and save over again, 
I keep the output results because they're not that important. I rarely go back to a thumbnail um, and go, oh man, I you know want to redo this thumbnail. So I'm not big on save. I used to save all of them. Then I realized I just had piles and piles of everything and I'm like, this is useless. Uh, the same with the videos. Right now I'm only keeping about six months of source. So the source material that went into it, unless it was a special project that I think is worth saving, most of my videos, I do not keep the source for, uh, for lack of knowing what to do with it. I was archiving it and then, you know, you're, you're creating terabytes and terabytes of data. And I'm almost like, I got, you know, I'm very big on redundancy. So if I'm going to save it, I save it everywhere. I make double copies. And then when you have like nine terabytes double copied, you're like, I, I now have a hard drive collection. And what am I gonna do with all this source footage? I save only the output footage of editing. And one of the reasons why is, for example, when I do my larger projects with clients that go on for, you know, maybe a few months, well, like a big wiring job, we end up with, and it's, it's one of those funny things, we're producing a huge volume of data with all the time-lapse cameras, but it's not all useful. We just shoot it all and then I, organize it all and say what's worth keeping and the rest of it you kind of scrap because sometimes the camera looked at nothing for a long time or it just was not interesting it wasn't worth adding to the video so i come back to it and i go yeah this isn't uh this isn't really worth keeping so that was a lot of what my source footage would be so yeah hardly became worth uh duplicating all of that now a little piece of my workflow though that is going on actively because of the fact that some of these projects take weeks to complete uh all of my video folder on my local computer is synced up with sync thing uh, to our rate array just for all my videos so even as i save this it's resyncing it as i rendered out any of these videos it's resyncing it um, on there as i download cards it gives me confidence because a lot of people have done this where they download a card to the computer and they go, all right, now I'm gonna use this card again. Somewhere in between, before you get around to editing, before you, before you get to back up the hard drive down to your computer. Now you don't have either. <laughs> You're like, crap, I lost it all. So in fear of that, as I, in, you know, because my computer could be a single point of failure, it's just constantly, as my computer's running, syncing everything to the server, so I don't have to think about it. So I don't mind dumping a card and reusing it. And I have several cards. I try to hold on to them until they're edited, but sometimes I got more stuff to shoot, and it's going on for weeks. So that's kind of the general editing workflow for this. And then when I'm done, I just you know upload it to YouTube, which I don't think I need to show you how to do that. <laughs> that, that part's the easiest part of all this. But you can see quickly, you can build these little templates and this is all open source. This is all, you know, Caden Live, uh, GIMP, and Shutter running. I, I'm running this on KDE, but you can run this on Ubuntu or most any other Linux distribution of your choice. And uh, it, it'll run pretty smooth on there. I've, I've really been happy with how it works in Caden Live uh, or KDE Neon and Caden Live. The themes seem to work really good together and it's been just smooth as silk. The latest iterations of Caden Live have uh, become very, very stable. Like the software, all the editing uh, work. I, I used to be like a religious saver, saver, clicking save all the time. And I don't have to seem to do that as often because it just doesn't crash like it used to. But uh, that's it for kind of my workflow and how I get things done. I guess I could show, I got another one of how to clean up audio and Audacity. I'm not gonna get deep into Audacity in this video. I have another video already covered doing some of the audio cleanup. But if you have a good microphone, not much of a need for it. The only time I've ever had to do audio clamp is when I when something gets messed up and there's like some background noise that has to be edited out. Then I will break out Audacity for that. And um, but I did a separate video already, on, so I'm not going to cover the topic again. But the uh, pro tip on Audacity is you can actually it supports drag and drop, so you can actually take the video you edited and drag it right on top of Audacity, and it'll import just the audio. Then you can process it, export it, and I in that video I believe I left the script, and I'll, I'll leave a link below to it uh, that you can remerge from the command line and put them back together. Or you can, if you want, split out audio um, and then import it back as a second track. So I had some audio that was really tricky to edit, so I actually pre-processed the audio in Audacity um, and then merged it back together in Caden Live. And you can drag uh, audio files in Caden Live, and they, they work just fine. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the editing I do. If you have questions, comments, or you think uh, you'd like me to expand more on one thing, I other than the little tutorial I gave you, that's my basic usage of GIMP. I have not gotten much better than that at it. Uh, I, yeah, I, it's 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 a lot for me uh, to learn still because after using Photoshop for at least 15 years, maybe longer, probably longer. I think I started Photoshop. Yeah, it's 2017, so I started fo learning Photoshop like 99, 98. So after spending that many years in Photoshop, it's not that. 
it's GIMP just it's a very different environment. So I've done everything I can to make it a little bit more photo like find all the equivalencies. And that's usually what I do is I start with uh, how to do this and GIMP like Photoshop and some of the YouTube searches. And there's a few YouTubers out there uh, that have some great GIMP, U GIMP tutorials that are really well done and they know GIMP very, very well. So uh, look for those uh, if you're finding, you can usually find a good tutorial on GIMP of how to get something done. And uh, But this is the basics of, I figured out how to do the layers. I figured out how to uh, right click and drag in there so I can quickly create the thumbnails and get processing done. This also allows me to get videos done really fast because I don't have to spend a ton of time jumping between virtual machines like I did before with, okay, I got to spin up my virtual machine just so I can run uh, Photoshop so I can get a thumbnail made. You know, anything that uh, adds to my workflow time cuts down time that's just not as productive. So i been happy to get it all in here. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the content here, like and subscribe and have a great day.